little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider, back again with something a little different for you for this holiday season. And today, I'm going to show you how to make and create this lovely encasing for a pomander, or pomander, you know, however you wish to pronounce it. Uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Now, a pomander is basically, the rough translation is apple of amber. Uh, it comes from the French, and you can make these with oranges or apples. I prefer apples because they're a lot easier to make, and I will explain why. And, uh, you know, typically you wouldn't necessarily have this lovely little meshy surrounding around it, but I thought that it sort of legitimizes what I'm doing uh, as far as a tutorial for this channel because it is crocheted and it is really, really, really simple. And we will get into what you're going to need so that you can make one of your very own. Um, and what I was saying about the definition, apple of amber, basically it, you know, obviously you need an apple and the amber aspect of it was ambergris was used as one of the perfumes. Now, in this case, we're going to be using cloves, which it's a lot easier to come by, let me tell you. Um, and we will get right into that. So I will show you what you're going to need, and then we will get started. Alrighty, so obviously, first, you are going to need an apple. <laughs> now, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and of course, naturally, all apples are different sizes, different shapes. You know, they are a natural thing. Therefore, this pattern that I'm going to give to you as far as the outer covering, it may require some tweaking. I will be the first to admit. However, it works up so fast and you can make variations on it relatively simply. So you should not have to have too much reason to fret. So obviously you are going to need an apple preferably with uh, as few of these dings and markings as possible. Um, you want it to be nice and firm. You do not want it to be too ripe by any means. Um, you, you want something that's nice and fresh and still, you know, very stiff and robust. Then you are going to need cloves, whole cloves, not ground. Ground cloves will not do you any good. And these are the cloves. And these have a wonderful, spicy holiday scent about them and absolutely love them. And so basically what you do is you stick these cloves into the apple and you want them to be closely stuck in, um, covering as much of the surface area as possible. And now the pricing on these will range depending upon where you get them from. Um, I did go to one big retailer and I found it was this itty bitty little container. It was like half an ounce for like five bucks. You are going to need several cups in order to cover, you know, a, a nice decent sized apple. For the ones that I've done, it required more than a cup each, uh, more than a cup of the cloves to sufficiently cover the apple. So with that being said, I would suggest go through wholesale or, you know, scrounge around, look at different retailers to see where you can get a good price. And they do not need to be organic or hand-picked, which is ironically what I ended up with. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the gist is, is that you need a whole clove so you can stab these little guys into the apple. And these little balls, you know, they fall off, that's okay. The, the main important thing is, is that you have this nice stabby, stabby thing that can go into the apple. And then when you have gone the distance and covered your apple with the cloves, you know, you want them, like I said, to be really tightly jammed in there. You know, you don't want a lot of space because the cloves act as a way for the moisture to come out of the apple through the cloves, therefore creating a really nice diffused, um, apple-y, spicy scent. And it smells lovely. 
you know, if this is your sort of smell, you will love this. It's all natural and, oh, it's, it's divine. Um, and as the apple dries out, it will shrink. And that is why I thought of the, uh, the covering because you can adjust it so that, let me show you real quick. You can adjust it. Now, it's basically a mesh, and I wove this green chain through, in and out, all of these holes, and then cinched it shut like a drawstring. Now, as your apple gets smaller, you can then remove this and re-thread it through holes further down to accommodate. These can get pretty small as they shrink and become desiccated. And, uh, you know, then, you know, when you want to make another pomander, uh, you can then, you know, take out the old one, put in a new one. And also this really doesn't take up a lot of yarn. So with that being said, you know, it's a really, really easy craft. The only thing I will say, well, I'll say two things. One, it is very messy. <laughs> it is very, very messy because as you're stabbing the apple with all of these little cloves, the juice will come out, you'll get sticky, you know, um, and, and so on and so forth. So um, if you are a, a clean freak, like I sometimes can be with certain things, you might want to reconsider, but it's a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I will say is that the the cloves, when you are stabbing them into the apple, see... That one doesn't have the ball on it. You have all those little points that can go into your thumb. Picture sewing without a thimble for a very long time through leather, okay? It can be very rough on the thumbs, but it's not that bad. Um, you know, and you're never actually getting punctured or anything. It's just the, the repetition can uh, hurt your thumb after a while. And I would strongly suggest once you start one of these, finish it. You know, you don't want to leave it half done, okay? I will say that. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to give you the overview as to how you can make these. Now, like I said, you could do this with an orange. However, obviously, the skin of an orange is a bit tougher than that of an apple. Therefore, you might want to consider doing an apple instead, okay? So, all of that being said and done... Um, we will now get into the crocheting. Now, of course, you could just put a bowl of these out, you know, during the holiday season, and it will smell divine. Certainly a lot better than those chemically treated pine cones that are oh so popular. Um, this is all natural, so I appreciate this. Um, now, you know, you can just tie it with some lace, which is the conventional method. You know, wrap some lace around it, tie it with a ribbon. But, you know, I like the whole crochet thing, so enough of my incessant rambling, we will get on to the actual tutorial. Okay. <laughs> All right, so onward to the actual tutorial part of this segment. Now, for this I used, this was Pound of Love by Lion Brand. You can use whatever it is that you like by all means. Um, this is just something that I happen to have already, so it's what I used. Um, it is a four- ply yarn. However, it's really more of a weight of three. And the hook size that I'm using is a size H. Now, like I said, since every apple is unique, keep that in mind. Um, you may need to change your hook size or the weight of your yarn so that the encasing will fit better. Okay. Also, I would suggest something that I didn't do. Um, I would suggest trying to fit it around the apple before the cloves are in. It's a lot easier, um, you know, for testing out the size. All right, so we're going to start with a slip knot. Okie dokie. And then we are going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to do a slip stitch into that first chain to create a ring. Then, then we're also going to be crocheting over this tail as we go. Mind. All right, so we're going to chain up three. One, two, and three. That's going to count as our first double crochet stitch. 
Then into this center ring, we are going to crochet a total of 12 double crochets. So the first chain counts as one, and then we've got two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And you know me, I always like to double check, you know. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Perfect. Okay. So the first round is done. And we're going to slip stitch into the top third chain of that first chaining that we did. So we slip stitch into there, right into the top, to complete our first round. Easy enough. Then we're going to chain three again for round two, and we're going to do a double crochet into that same first stitch. So it's in essence two double crochets into that first stitch, then into the next double crochet. We're going to do two double crochets. And we're going to do this for each double crochet. We're going to be doing two double crochets into each stitch. So we're going from 12 to 24. Now what this does is it creates a base for our encasing. And that way, in theory, the little bits from the cloves will not fall all over the place as they dry. Um, you know, that is, of course, typically why a lot of people, they tend to use lace, but crocheting lace can take a long time. And I wanted to make this really nice and simple and stress-free for you so that you can make a whole bunch. You know, you can, of course, use a large doily pattern. That would look lovely. Um, you could use cheesecloth. You could use tulle. That would look lovely. But I always like to give you guys options and also to try to have you use your creative noodles so that you have lots of options to use as sort of a springboard. All right, so now we have 24 stitches. And yes, I like to double count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, yay! All right, so now here's the fun part. After we do a slip stitch into the top third chain here, so we can complete that round. Okay, now we're going to go on to the mesh. Alrighty, so for the mesh, this is really the easy part from here on in. So to do the mesh, you chain three, one, two, three, and we are going to skip a double crochet. We're going to go into the next with a single crochet stitch, creating a little loop. Chain three, skip one, go into the next with a single crochet chain three. I'm going to be chaining three from now on, trust me. You know, and you're just going to skip one single crochet each time doing a single crochet. So skip over, single crochet into the next. Chain three, 
skip one, go into the next with a single crochet, chaining of three, skip one, go into the next with a single crochet, chain three, skip one, go into the next with a single, chaining of three, skip one, go into the next. Now you could use a different number of chains, just I would say keep that number consistent throughout. You know, you could do, if you want nice big open mesh holes, you could do, you know, four, five, six, what, what have you. Uh, just keep in mind that, of course, you know, the, the more chains that you do, the bigger the mesh is going to be, you know. So it's really a matter of taste. For me, I thought that three was quite sufficient. All right, now we have reached the end. So I would be skipping this one. And so now what we're going to do, since we have, this is where we came out of right here, and we will be skipping that one, right? Well, chaining three, going to do a single crochet into that loop that we created, like so. Chain three, single crochet into the next loop. Chain three, if my yarn will behave. Single crochet into the next loop. Chain three, single crochet into the next loop. Chain three, and you just, you just keep doing this until it is the right, shall we say, height of the bag that you want to create. And when you reach the end of this round, you just keep going in a spiral fashion. You know, we're not doing actual rounds anymore. See, we've we've reached that spot, you see. So all I'm doing is I'm going into this one where we have the beginning of that old round there. I'm just going to go right into here with my single and then do a single into this next one, you're just going in a spiral fashion. It's really, really easy. You know, the only time in which you actually need to worry about, you know, is this the beginning and the end of the round? It's just the first, you know, two rounds really, you know, which makes this super easy to do. I mean, also, of course, this would look lovely if you crocheted this perhaps in a, a ribbon yarn. Ooh that would look awesome. Or if you're feeling really industrious, using an actual ribbon, um, that would look quite nice too. You know, you can do that. I mean, crocheting is not limited to just using yarn. Oh no, not by any means. You could use some hemp or twine or jute, um, you know, ribbon, um, t-shirt yarn, you know, really, what have you, by all means, get creative, have fun with this. So as you can see, it's starting to pucker. It's starting to create a bit of a bowl shape, as you can see. And so what you would do around this point is you would put your apple in here and figure, hmm, is, is this going to fit? Is this going to work for me? If so, great. Um, and also keep in mind that, you know, this does stretch quite a bit, okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, with that in mind, uh, you have to be really more concerned about is the circumference big enough? The height, that, that will sort of figure itself out, believe you me. Um, so, you know, all you would have to do is just pull this taut and you can snip off the ends. Um, because we crocheted around it initially, so that's easy. And so you would just keep crocheting 
around and around and around and around in a nice old spiral. And then when it is about the height that you want, you would put your apple in there with the cloves, um, you know, when it's done. And then to create the drawstring that you would weave in and out and around, uh, around the, the top of the apple, all I did was a simple chain stitch. However, you could, of course, use uh, ribbon or, you know, really whatever it is that you like, you know. And I think these are a really easy, fun you know, activity for even the whole family to join in because if you can stick a clove into an apple, hey, you're in. <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, you know, the, this would be great for the kids to get involved with, you know, because they could help you by jabbing those in there and then you could make this lovely, lovely casing um, and then everybody wins. So listen, I hope that you found this inspirational. Um, it's a bit nostalgic for me because I remember making these as a very wee child when I was knee high to a knee, and I thought that I would share it with you. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, um, and my thumbs are better <laughs> since doing this. Uh, they've been drying out for a bit. And uh, if you did like this, please hit the like button. It means very, very much to me when you, you know, when you support my channel. I very much appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, what have you, I love hearing from you in the in the comments section down below. Um, you know, you guys are great. And uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please do so because I try to post videos as often as I can. And that way you'll be in the know. So listen, my dears, until next time, I want you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you all, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.